This week marks the crossover point for the Virginia General Assembly, which is essentially the halfway point of our legislative session. It also means that each chamber can only consider legislation which was introduced by the opposite chamber from now until the end of the legislative session. So we wanted to give you a quick update on where a few pieces of legislation important to the profession stand. Of course, we've been carefully following tax conformity from the start of session and even before that. Our major focus initially was to ensure that the legislature worked on conformity from a 2017 perspective and didn't attempt to address the major tax reforms the federal government passed that impact 2018 and beyond. And while we've been relatively successful in keeping the legislation focused on 2017, we've hit a few roadblocks along the way. The first major one was a disagreement between the House and Senate about whether to include the change in the medical deduction floor that the federal legislation included. So where Virginia has landed on this is that Virginia will not conform with that change, meaning that the medical deduction floor is going to stay at 10% as it was scheduled to increase to. Of course, as we managed to get this part straightened out, the federal government threw us another curveball in their budget that they passed just last week and included several extender provisions which impact the 2017 filing year. So Virginia now has to quickly figure out how we're going to deal with those. So here's what we think is going to happen at this point. There's already a conformity bill on the governor's desk. He plans to send that bill as well as the second one back with amendments to include the extenders. So also in the tax arena, we've seen a couple of pieces of legislation which will impact tax preparers. First, there's a bill that's going to require moving forward that tax practitioners include their PTIN number on state returns in addition to federal. We don't anticipate this being a, a tremendous change since most tax softwares already do this. So just more of an issue for you to be aware of. So the other thing we wanted to share is that there is some data breach legislation that specifically impacts tax preparers. Um, if you experience a breach in your firm of your tax data for your clients, you are going to have to report that to the tax department moving forward. We did work with the tax department on ensuring that the, the scope of this legislation was appropriate and that they weren't overreaching um, and that it was in compliance with IRS rules as well. Moving on, we also wanted to update you on a few bills which impact your CPA license. First, the Virginia Board of Accountancy and the VSCPA work together to introduce legislation which will allow the board to move all licenses and renewals to the same date. So effective immediately upon the governor's signature, uh, the board is going to begin working towards a June 30th renewal date regardless of which year you fall into. We've worked closely with the board to ensure that this transition happens as smoothly as possible and everyone receives sufficient communication on how it's going to work. The other piece of legislation impacting the Board of Accountancy is pretty simple. It actually will allow them to more easily lower licensing fees without having to go through the full regulatory process. Basically, instead of having to wait 18 to 24 months to go through the process, they'll, those actions will be exempt from the Administrative Processes Act, which means that they can more quickly lower fees if they determine that they're bringing in too much revenue. So along the vein of your license and related issues, there is some regulatory reform legislation making its way through the General Assembly. You may have heard talk at the federal and state level over the past several years about the need to reduce regulatory burdens on businesses and on the economy. So how this is manifesting in Virginia is a piece of legislation which will attempt to reduce regulation by about 25% through a pilot program, which is going to focus on the Department of Professional and Occupational Regulation and the Department of Criminal Justice Services. Now, while this doesn't seem like it impacts the Board of Accountancy as an independent agency immediately, the idea is that this plan would be eventually rolled out to all state agencies. And so we're watching it closely to ensure that any changes that are made or any um, measures or metrics that are set in place don't have an adverse effect on the regulation of the profession and still allow the Board of Accountancy to achieve its mission of protecting the public. The last piece of legislation we wanted to mention briefly is one dealing with changing the definition of small business for health insurance purposes. And the point of this legislation is to allow sole proprietors or self-employed people to participate in the small company's market for insurance. Our hope is that if this legislation passes, it will make 
it easier for our members within sole proprietorships and smaller businesses to purchase insurance at a more affordable rate. I just want to take a moment to thank all of our members who either participated in CPA Assembly Week or took the time out of their busy schedules to send a message to a legislator related to one of these important issues. We'll keep you posted as session wraps up for the year and we know what the future looks like.